Hi everyone, today we are going to study the routing algorithms. Now, the routing algorithm is that part of the network layer which is responsible for deciding which output line an incoming packet should be transmitted on. So, whenever a packet arrives, so which outgoing line should be chosen to forward that packet is decided by the routing algorithm. So, as the name suggests, it is a routing algorithm that means it selects the route for forwarding an incoming packet to an outgoing line. It decides among all the available output lines which one has to be chosen. Now, if the subnet uses datagrams internally, so if the subnet is using datagrams, then this decision must be made separately for every arriving data packet. You know, datagrams are used in case of connectionless services. So in a connectionless services, there is no establishment of a dedicated path. No dedicated path is established in case of uh, in case of a connectionless service where datagrams are used. So, if the subnet is using datagrams, then this decision is made separately for every data packet. So, as you know, in connectionless services, the data packets are not dependent upon the previous uh, upon the path chosen by the previous data packets. They are independent to uh, uh, follow an independent or a different path, right? So, they may choose the same path which had been uh, chosen by the previous data packets or they may choose a separate path. So, where so the cases where datagrams are used that means the cases in which the subnet uses datagrams that means a subnet would use datagrams when it is using a connectionless service so in this case a decision is made separately for every different data packet since the best route may have changed since last time, since there is no dedicated connection, that means all the routes that are available may be used by different sources and destinations. So, depending upon the best route available at that particular point of time, every data packet would be forwarded through a different or same outgoing line. It depends upon which is the best route that is available at that point of time. Now, if this subnet uses virtual circuits, you know, virtual circuits are used in case of connection oriented services. So, if this subnet is using virtual circuits internally, then routing decisions are made only when a new virtual circuit is being set up. In this case, the routing decision would be made only once and that is at the type of connection establishment that which would be the best route for transferring data for this particular connection and from there on all the data packets would choose the same path. So, this is when the subnet is using virtual circuits and when is the subnet using virtual circuits? When it is a connection oriented service wherein a dedicated path is established for the entire connection. Thereafter, data packets just follow the previously established route. So, this is we are telling in case of the connection oriented serv uh, services where virtual circuits are used by subnets. So, once a, a path has been chosen, that means the routing decision has been made at the time of connection establishment, then all the data packets would follow the same path which has been uh, previously established. That means the route which has been previously established, all the data paths packets would follow that previously established route only in case of virtual circuits which is in connection oriented services. So, the latter case that means the routing for virtual circuits is sometimes called session routing. So, when you do routing for a connection oriented services or when you do routing for uh, virtual circuits, this is some this routing is sometimes called session routing. Why? Because a route remains in force for an entire user session. For the entire duration of the session, that means until all the data has been transmitted by the sender to the receiver, the same route would remain and all the packets would follow the same route. Hence, this kind of routing is also known as session routing where in case of virtual circuits and when are virtual circuits used by subnets in case of connection oriented services. Now, 
why is it useful to make a distinction between routing and forwarding many a times people get confused between routing and forwarding or they consider it to be the same so we will see here what is the difference between routing and forwarding see routing is the decision of which route to use right when you go from a uh, from a particular source to destination say for example if you are going from delhi to Dehradun to Delhi. So there are uh, there may be two or three routes available. Now it is upon you to decide which route you would choose, depending upon whether you want to choose a route which has a less traffic or you would want to choose a route which uh, has a shorter duration. So depending upon uh, whatever uh, whatever thing you find optimal, you would choose the route accordingly. So it is the decision of which route to use among the many available routes. You have to decide upon one uh, route which would be optimal. optimal so that is what you call routing that is decision of which routes to use and then what is forwarding forwarding is what happens when a packet arrives right so routing is choosing a route for forwarding that packet and forwarding is actually forwarding that packet right when a packet has arrived and based upon the routing decision a specific route is chosen then that packet is forwarded or handed over on that particular route so this is the difference between routing and forwarding so one can think of a router as having two processes inside it so you can uh, uh, visualize or you can imagine that a router has two processes inside it right now what are these two processes one of them handles each packet as it arrives right so the one process is handling all the packets as and when they arrive looking up the outgoing line to use for it so when a packet arrives then the router one process inside the router looks for an outgoing line okay that what would be the best outgoing line to uh, forward this particular packet which has just arrived right so one process would look up for the outgoing line to use for it in the routing tables now routing tables are a ta are the tables which um, maintain a list of updated routes from the source to destination depending upon the availability of the route or the congestion in the route or the shortest uh, time taken for transmission uh, upon these basis the routing tables maintain an updated list of routes right so the router one of the process in the router looks up for the best available outgoing line to forward an incoming packet through the routing table or with the help of the routing table which it maintains so every router basically maintains a routing table this we have already started so this process is forwarding that means you look for a uh, appropriate route with the help of the routing table and then you handle that packet that means you uh, forward it through that particular outgoing line which you found best from the updated list of the routing table so this particular process is known as forwarding now the other process now as i said that a router can be thought of having two processes one process as i said is looking up for the best route in the routing table and then forwarding that particular packet through that routing table what is the other process the other process is responsible for filling in and updating the routing table now as the first process is looking up into the routing table to know which is the best route for forwarding a packet so you also need to update the list of the routing table right so this is also the responsibility of the router to update its routing table according to the situations as and when they occur that means if there is a congestion in a particular route it will update its routing table if the particular path is free now uh, it is free of congestion it will update its routing table so uh, depending upon all these criteria a router is also responsible for updating the routing table because if the routing table is not updated then if it looks up to the routing table it will not get the correct information as to which is the best route available for forwarding an incoming data packet so as important as it is to find a route uh, in the routing table equally it is important to update those routes in the routing table only then will it be able to get correct information when it looks up to its routing table to find the best available path for forwarding a data packet so now you know that a router has two processes and these processes uh, out of these processes one process chooses an optimal route 
for an incoming data packet so that it can be forwarded through the best available path and the other process is responsible for filling in and updating the routing table now routing algorithms for this for filling in and updating the routing table there are various algorithms right so how do you decide how to fill in and how to update the routing tables this is with the help of algorithms which are known as the routing algorithms and basically these routing algorithms can be grouped into two major classes now what are these two major classes one is your non adapted Uh, routing algorithms and other is your adaptive routing algorithms or in other words we can say that the routing algorithms can be classified into two different categories the non adaptive routing alg algorithms and the adaptive routing algorithms now if you talk of the non adaptive uh, routing algorithms they do not base their routing decisions on measurements or estimates of the current traffic and topology right so they do not take into account basically the estimate of what is the current traffic or what is the topology of the network then instead of that the choice of the route to use is to get from i to j that is if i is the source and j is the destination and if you have to choose the best route for, to get from i to j that is for all i and j that means for this is for any particular source node to any particular destination node it is computed in advance offline and downloaded to the routers when the network is booted right so you do not make the decision for choosing the best route upon uh, uh, finding out whether what is the current um, traffic condition or what is the topology of the network instead you choose this route in advance it is computed in advance offline and downloaded to the routers when when the network is boot booted so the moment the network is booted this particular a route which had been computed in advance is downloaded to those routers right so this procedure is sometimes called as static routing static is something which is not changing once done once calculated it is used always so that is why this kind of routing is known as static routing because once the route has been calculated or computed and then downloaded to the routers then irrespective of the fact whether there is congestion what are the traffic situations or what is the topology always that route will be used so that is why this kind of routing algorithm is also known as static routing algorithms but basically you call them by the name of non adaptive routing algorithms now talking of the next class or category of routing algorithms is the adaptive routing algorithms so what are your uh, adaptive routing algorithms the adaptive uh, routing algorithms as the name suggests they are quite adap adaptive of their environment right so that means in contrast to the non adaptive algorithms these algorithms adapt themselves according to the and uh, according to their environment that is they change their routing decisions to reflect changes in the topology and usually the traffic as well so as and when the topology of the network changes or the traffic conditions change the adaptive routing algorithms also change their or update their routing tables accordingly and the and then change the route also accordingly so the adaptive algorithms differ in where they get their information right so the uh, basically the difference is in from where they are getting the information see in case of non adaptive algorithms the route was computed in advance but in case of adaptive algorithms where are they uh, getting the information regarding the topology or traffic conditions from so uh, locally from the adjacent router, routers whatever adjacent routers they have locally at that point of time they get this information regarding the traffic conditions or the topology from those adjacent local routers or from all the routers right or from all the routers and when they change the routes example every delta t second whenever they change the route it may be every delta t second when the load changes or when topology changes so whenever the network load is changing or when the topology is changing say in every delta t second they will change the routes as and when right so say for example during uh, the first data packet transmission of the first data packet a particular route r1 
was uh, found best so the data packet 1 was sent to root r1 but now the there is a lot of traffic in root r1 and this uh, non adaptive uh, sorry this adaptive routing algorithm gets information about the congestion in this particular root r1 from its adjacent or uh, all the routers uh, routers available there so what does it uh, say it says okay now there is congestion in this particular path and my packet may get stuck or lost due to congestion so it is better to change the route and accordingly it finds a better route where there is less traffic just as we do just as we humans do that if we are choosing going through a particular route which we find best and then all of a sudden if we find a lot of traffic jam there what we do we change our routes so same the adaptive algorithms also do that depending upon the load as and when it changes load means the load of the data packets in a particular uh, path if the load increases it will choose it will Uh, change that path and uh, take over some other path and if the load uh, reduces then it will choose that particular path instead of the previously chosen path so this is uh, what happens in case of the adaptive routing algorithm that in every delta t seconds <coughs> obviously this is the time we uh, assume that uh, during uh, in this interval of time there is always a change in load and when the topology changes the uh, routers would change the routes also and then what metric is used for optimization like how do they decide that this is the optimal route for the transmission of <coughs> data packets this is the distance distance means lesser the distance better the route is right just as in real life we find out which is the best distance best path the path with the less uh, with a less distance per miles so what is the criteria or metric for optimization or what is the in other words if i say what is the metric for finding out the optimal path that is distance in miles is less sorry if the distance is less then it is an optimal path if the number of hops number of hops means the number of intermediate nodes through which the packet has to uh, travel before reaching the actual destination if these number of hops are less then it is an optimal path or if then estimated trans uh, transit time transit time means the time for which the packet has to wait before being passed on to the next intermediate node so if the estimated transit time is also less then also the route is optimal so depending upon what is the current criteria out of these three criteria so the first criteria is distance the distance traveled should be less the second is the number of hops number of hops should be less that means the number of intermediate nodes should be less and then estimated trans transit time that means the time uh, for which a packet has to wait before it can be actually forwarded to through an outgoing line to another intermediate node that that waiting time should be less so these are the three factors which basically decide which is the best available route for transmitting a data packet so there are a variety of routing algorithms both static and dynamic now one thing just as the non adaptive routing algorithm is known as uh, static because it does not change whatsoever the adaptive routing algorithms are known as dynamic because they keep changing according to the topology and the network load so there are a variety of routing algorithms both in the categories of static and dynamic that is in both in the category of adaptive as well as non adaptive routing algorithms and these different kind of uh, static and dynamic algorithm routing algorithms or these different kind of adaptive and non adaptive routing algorithms we will study in the next video